when I felt Bruce's body, it was like touching a rock. His muscles were hard, dense, compact, yet pliable, like a baby. That quote was from Bruce Lee's friend and student, Taki Kimura. So with Bruce's musculature, his muscle fibers and his composition was very dense. So the muscle that he had, there was no flap in it. It was just all dense. So you guys may have seen lifters out here in the bodybuilding and powerlifting world, or even calisthenic world, where they might have a little bit of size to them and they are bigger, but they're not really dense. They're not, it's not dense musculature. But what, what even is dense musculature? What is this? So I find it interesting that isometrics, and in particular, in Paul Waite's isometric manual, he mentions that isometric training can get us that hard, dense musculature that Bruce had. And go figure, Bruce was doing overcoming isometric training. So kind of put two and two together. So let's find out exactly how this correlates with one another and how our isometric training can get us that dense musculature so that we can have, as Taki Kimura so eloquently stated, hard, dense, compact, yet pliable musculature. Let's get into this, but before we do, let's talk about today's sponsor. Babbel is a language learning app that teaches us how to speak, read, and listen in new languages. The entire Babbel experience is totally adaptable to our personal goals and needs. So no matter what our motivation is for learning, Babbel can help us. There's multiple ways to learn. Also, lessons, games, videos, content about culture, and even, my, this is my favorite part, Babbel Live, where we have live online virtual classes with top teachers that are actually fluent in the language you're trying to learn. That is huge. You want to talk about getting immersed in the culture? This is it right here. Babbel prepares us for situations we'll actually encounter in real life, and we'll learn everything we need to have real conversations with people in their native language. It also gives us cultural context for our language, so we'll learn more than just memorizing vocabulary words like in high school. We'll actually understand the meaning behind what we're learning. Lessons are built by teams of over 100 language experts voiced by native speakers. Best part, we only need 10 minutes, 10 minutes a day. And in as little as three weeks, we can start having conversations in a new language. In addition to learning how to speak and read that language, we'll also learn about that language's culture, people, history, and more. Best part is since we know each other, we get 60% off when you use my link below. So go ahead and click it and start learning a new language today. All right, guys, so I was thinking about how to spread our love of isometrics to a wider audience. And then I thought about my own heritage. And you might not have known this, but I am prim primarily Spanish. I am Cuban and Puerto Rican and Jamaican. All right, so I have a lot of Spanish blood going on in there. And I never learned any Spanish when I was younger from my parents, and that's okay. Luckily, we have apps like Babbel. Now let's first talk about what muscle density is, all right? So muscle density is primarily determined by the ratio of contractile proteins to non contractile proteins within the muscle fiber. The contractile proteins, which include actin and myosin, are responsible for generating muscle tension and force production. Muscle tension and force production, one of our favorite things to talk about on the channel with isometrics. The non-contractile proteins, such as collagen and elastin, provide support and structure to the muscle fiber. When we're resistance training out here, the muscle fibers undergo micro tears, which are then repaired and rebuilt with an increased amount of contractile proteins, and this forms the basis of the progressive overload that we know today. This results in an increase in muscle fiber size, known as hypertrophy, and a corresponding increase in muscle strength. However, the type of resistance training can affect the type of hypertrophy that occurs. So for example, high repetition, low weight training has been found to primarily produce sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, which involves an increase in the fluid and non-contractile elements within the muscle fiber. This results in a larger but less dense muscle. In contrast, low repetition, high weight training, such as isometric exercise, has been found to primarily produce myofibrillar hypertrophy, which involves an increase in the size and number of the contractile units within the muscle fiber. This this results in a denser, stronger muscle. In addition to this type of resistance training, other factors can also contribute to muscle density. These include, of course, genetics, body fat percentage, and muscle fiber type. Certain individuals may be predisposed to having denser muscles due to their genetic makeup, 
Body fat percentage can also affect muscle density as a higher body fat percentage can result in a less defined muscle appearance. Finally, individuals with a higher proportion of type 2 muscle fibers, which are responsible for generating quick explosive movements, may have denser muscles compared to those with a higher proportion of type 1 muscle fibers, which are responsible for endurance activities. I know for myself, a lot of my training methods involve that type 2 fast twitch um, explosive muscle fiber. So in some places, I'm very dense and it might look like, bro, do you even lift? Not true. Okay. So if you didn't know that, aha, uh -huh, now you know. And if you look at Bruce, and this this is not me comparing myself to Bruce, it's just he was the set, he was the type two. So he wasn't big, he was a buck thirty-five, but there was a lot of power condensed into that one thirty-five. That's why he was launching people into it. And people think that it's just <laughs> Well, we're not going to get into what's movie and what's actual strength. But I will say this, though. He was very powerful for his size. And that is because he had all that power condensed into his body, his musculature. We also know that he did a lot of isometric training. Now, isometric training wasn't the only thing that he did. He had a whole routine, including um, all his dynamic lifts. Of course, his martial arts exercises, cardio. All right. So o overcoming isometric wasn't like the vast majority of his his lifting but it was a part of it and a part of it that he took very seriously okay and it was part of the entire routine that bruce lee did by the way if you don't know what bruce lee's isometric exercise routine is here's a link right here we cover it in detail go ahead and check that out at your leisure but let's talk about isometric exercise and how this correlates into that style of training so for those new to the channel isometric exercise involves holding a muscle in static contraction against an immovable object or against one's own body weight aka overcoming and yielding this type of exercise targets the muscle fibers in a unique way particularly the fast twitch muscle fibers which are responsible for generating explosive force and power these muscle fibers have a greater potential for hypertrophy compared to slow twitch fibers which are responsible for our endurance activities when we are contracting isometrically the muscle fibers are activated and generate tension without shortening or lengthening this creates a high level of muscular tension that leads to the recruitment and activation of a large number of muscle fibers over time this sustained tension results in the stimulation of muscle hypertrophy, particular myofibrillar hypertrophy, which is associated with an increase in contractile proteins within the muscle fibers like we had talked about before. Moreover, overcoming isometric training, which is a lot of what we do with the isochain and isomax, which involves attempting to move an immovable object or hold a weight that is too heavy to lift, is also what Bruce Lee did, by the way, creates an even greater amount of tension within the muscle fibers. This type of isometric exercise is particularly effective for developing strength and muscle density as it recruits a greater number of muscle fibers and activates them in a way that promotes myofibrillar hypertrophy. Additionally, isometric exercises are low impact and can be performed without the need for equipment, making them a convenient and accessible form of resistance training. They can also be easily incorporated into a workout program and used to target specific muscle groups. To conclude, isometric exercise is an effective way to develop muscle density particularly myofibrillar hypertrophy. This type of exercise creates sustained muscular tension and recruits a large number of muscle fibers, particularly the fast twitch fibers. Overcoming isometrics in particular can be used to create even greater tension and stimulate muscle hypertrophy. Isometric exercises are low impact, convenient and accessible. And especially when we have the isomax and isochain, we can actually see our force readout in real time, which is just such a difference maker. And I stand by that. The key term throughout this entire video, now I wanna see if you caught it, is the type of hypertrophy, myofibrillar hypertrophy all right the hypertrophy that most people think of and, and I'm not gonna speak in absolutes but is uh, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy the I'm I'm getting jacked son hypertrophy you know ah, you know look at my muscle size and while that is yeah I'm not gonna talk crap on that I a lot of my workout routines over the years have been Pri like not primarily mostly sarcoplasmic in nature all right so uh, who doesn't want to get big all right there are some people that really don't care about that you know for me in certain areas i care about it you know I, I, this is just this is just us connecting all right but there are some places where i really don't care much about it and i'd rather have it be myofibrillar and so when and that is again using what you got 
in there already and making it really powerful. This is like a really dumbed down way of the exercise science version that I just gave you guys a couple minutes ago, all right? Using what you got and making it really freaking dense. <laughs> But um, what are your thoughts? Comment down below, go ahead and drop a like. Thanks for watching. And if you're not yet part of the squad, hit that subscribe button. Come join the squad with us. We'll see you next video. Peace.